Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games, and in this video we're going to be looking at the more advanced paths functions that are inside of GameMaker Studio 1 and 2. So what we are going to be doing is picking up exactly where we left off in the last project. I've actually downloaded it and I've got it running here in the background, so follow along with me there if you want to copy along with the code. But what we're going to create is a guard that we were using last time, and when we left click, we're going to create a goal for him to access. And he is going to walk towards that goal and avoid obstacles to the best of his ability. And you can see here that these walls are solid and he is going to find his way around. And this is actually quite simple code to get up and running really quickly. These functions are quite powerful and they give you a lot of flexibility if you use the right ones. So let's dive into that. Now the first thing I want to do though is make the sprites we need so we can get that out of the way. We're going to create a SPR goal, that little yellow box I had. I'm going to fill that in right here. Uh, we'll get over to that help in just a second. And then I'm going to make this a 16 by 16 because I don't want it to be too large. And we're going to create one more sprite, call it SPR wall. We'll edit that, and we're just gonna throw in some text that is blue, and just say that it is a wall, so that we can know it is. Now, the thing to note here is that your collision mask needs to be set to mode full image. It wants to just wrap the collision mask around the text, which is gonna look really strange and not do exactly what we want when we put it in our level. Now let's make those objects as well. So we need an OBJ goal. Assign the sprite. It doesn't need any code. Same thing for the wall. Doesn't need any code except that we say that it is solid. And then inside of our room, <clears throat> make sure you're on the instances tab or the layer. And let's just put in some of these walls so that we can see that it is working. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because it's not too complicated or difficult to see how it actually works but if we set these up then you get an idea that our functions are actually working properly and how we want them to so that's all I want to do for that next we're going to come into our workspace into our obj guard and press f12 and we're going to set up the code to left click and create our obj goal before we get into anything else because this doesn't really have to do with the paths functions this is just so that we can easily create new goals and have him move around just on the fly so we don't have to reload the game every time and we're going to do that through if mouse check button pressed this is going to be mb left just like accepting keyboard input, actually. Then we're going to say if instance exists, obj goal. We're going to say uh, instance destroy, obj goal. Now, if you're using Game Maker Studio 1, this will look just a tiny bit different. You'll need to say something like with obj goal, and then you'll need to say uh, instance destroy without that because Game Maker Studio 1 doesn't have the ability to actually say instance destroy and pass in an argument. But Game Maker Studio 2 does, so that's what I'm going to show on screen right here. So we don't want any goals on their screen uh, after we click except for the one we want, so we don't want any extras on there. So we're going to create uh, instance create layer. And again, Game Maker Studio 1 is going to be slightly different just in the sense that you don't need this extra part. It's a lot easier in Game Maker Studio 1 to make new objects, actually. So we are going to say, we're going to make it at mouse X, mouse Y, the layer that we are currently on, which is just layer, and OBJ goal. So we're going to create that, make sure that it's the only one, and then when we left click, it will show up and then we can do things with that. So that is the basics of that. Let me press F5 and run it just to make sure the system is up and running. Our guard will continue along the path that he's on because we haven't changed that yet, but if I left click, okay, perfect, up and running. Now, we're going to come in here to the create event and comment that out because we don't actually want him running that path anymore. This path that we originally had set up is no longer going to be used. So we can delete it if we want or keep it, totally up to you. 
Now let's go into the help manual and look at the motion planning functions. These are the more advanced ones and some of them are not paths. You can see here that there's motion planning steps and paths and we have linear and potential. Down here is grid and that is what I'm going to cover next because it's much more advanced and it uh, requires a little more uh, coding a lot more effort, but it gives you a lot more in return as well. So if you want to learn about grids, jump onto the next video. But for simple but effective pathfinding AI that just takes a tiny bit of code, these are fantastic functions. Linear is going to be a one-way straight line trying to find the path. Uh, it tells you that if you click on it right here, this MP linear step, it doesn't actually use paths, but I'm still going to cover it in this paths video. Um, this function does not try to make detours. It just tries, it'll just fail and stop moving. It'll tell you if it can reach the position or not, though. It's going to, before it even starts moving, figure out if it can make it, and then it will tell you if it's going to succeed or not. So that's not exactly what we want. These linear functions can be useful, especially if you're shooting like a bullet or a fireball in a game. It can tell it to go straight ahead and it will tell you if it can get there or if it like collides with something, then you can do that. But these are not that useful. But let me show you exactly how they work. So if we do MP linear step, all we need is that function inside of the step event. So if we come inside of here, and all we do is say MP linear step. Let me just bring this up here. MP linear step just requires four arguments. So we're gonna say obj goal dot x, obj goal dot y, a speed of two, and check all. That is specifically if you want to check all instances or just ones that are solid and you put false if you just want the solid which is what we want we're going to wrap this in an if statement that says if instance exists obj goal then do that otherwise you're going to get an error right away if you try to run this and i forgot one bracket okay so let's actually just press f5 and i'll show you this linear function it's super simple but it works it's going to go straight to where it is, but it's not going to avoid any path. It's just going to get stuck right there on that wall that we put on that tree. You can tell it to then go somewhere else, but it doesn't, it's not what we want. It's not bad and it's useful to know it exists, which is why I'm showing you, but it's not what we're looking for. So instead, we're going to back out of here and instead go down here. Uh, MP linear path and objects, we'll get to that. I'm going to explain it in potential step because those are the ones we're going to be using. So MP potential step is very similar to linear, except that it's actually going to go around objects intelligently. And it works exactly the same. So if we actually come down here and let me do that so you can see it. But we're going to say MP, not linear, potential step. And we're actually going to say the exact same thing. So obj goal.x, obj goal.y, speed of two, and false. And if we run that, we're going to get the exact same thing, but now he's going to avoid obstacles. So if I click right here, he's going to know that there's a wall there because it's flagged as solid and go around it, which is great. This is one line of code inside of your step event, and he moves. You can see it's not perfect. He's getting a little stuck because he's trying to figure out if he can go through there and he can't, but he gets there eventually. And that's just one line of code, technically two, since we have to use this instance exists. But if you had a path that, I mean, you don't even need a path actually. That's part of the thing is right here. This is not technically a path function because all it's doing is it is potentially taking a step and if it hits a solid or an instance that it's not allowed to, it says, okay, I can't go here. I'm going to find a new path and tries to take another step and another step and another step until it finds a way to get there. Now, if it can't reach its goal, then it's just going to wander around uh, aimlessly as close as it can to that goal. Like if it was inside of a solid wall, it would just wander around that. But this is a really good start for uh, simple AI. And you might think that this is all you need, but I'm going to show you that you want to actually use the one right below this. 
the MP potential path. MP potential path uses the paths that we've show, that we've used and talked about before. And the nice thing about that is, is it gives you all of those built-in variables. You can see that when this guy was running, we didn't have any knowledge about what he was doing. We knew where he was going and how fast because we set it, but that was about it. We had no idea if he was close to it. We'd have to write our own function for that or use um, like, distance to object, but there's a lot of information that is not easily accessible because this is not a path. And we talked about all of the built-in variables that paths have last video. And to access those, we just want to use a path, but continue to use this potential because it avoids obstacles automatically. So if we come into here, this MP potential path is what we're actually going to use. So it needs a step size, and a factor as well as a path right here. So it requires a little bit more and I'll explain those as we use them. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment that out as well. And now we're actually going to come up here because we actually want to do it just once. Uh, this is going to be a path. And when you start a path, your character will continue to go along that for as long as the path is going. So all we need to do here is create a path and we're going to go ahead and make this a var my path. And we're going to set that equal to path add. So we need a path to pass in to this, poten this MP potential path function. And we can actually just create that ourselves right here. That's perfectly fine. Then we're going to call that function MP potential path. We're going to pass in the variable we just made. The goal is going to be the exact same. Let me open this up so I don't go off the screen. Now step size is again kind of the same thing as speed. It's how fast you want to be going. This factor though is a little tricky. So they explain it as uh, it needs to be larger than one otherwise you're going to get an error. And four is what they suggest for a good size. But the larger it is. Um, it, the, the, the more paths it's going to look to see that it can take. So if the path that you think your AI is going to be taking requires a lot of, a lot of detours, that, it's, that it can't go straight at it, um, you, you're going to want a larger number here. A smaller number means that the path is actually going to be fairly straightforward. It doesn't need to expand how much it's looking outside of that kind of linear path. The larger number it is, the more... Uh, ideas it will have of how to get there. But if you make it too large, it might just go on forever. So you need to be very careful. Uh, so with that in mind, we're just gonna set it to four as that is what they suggest. And again, check all we're gonna set to false because we don't want it to avoid all instances, just the ones that are solid. Now, this will be a good time to point out that this is the big difference between MP potential path and the object paths. So right here, you can see that you need an object to block the path. So this is if you just want it to look for a specific object in your game, like a wall or something like that, then this will avoid that object. We are going to be doing uh, the just the potential paths and just avoiding all solids. But again, you have the object, you have the potential if you want to do object functions instead to just avoid simple one objects in your game, which can be useful. It's good to know they exist. So we've got potential path. Now all we have to do is say path start with my path, a speed of two, give it a path end action. So this is just going to say stop as soon as he gets there and it's going to be true which is perfectly fine because it's actually starting where he is and then ending where we're telling him to go with that. And with that right there, he's actually, well, as soon as we comment out that malformed if statement that is, uh, he is going to dynamically avoid the paths. Now you might be thinking, well, okay, he was already doing that before. Right, but let me show you the difference. If we come down here and I say show debug message 
half position. Now all of a sudden, because he is on a path, we have access to all of those variables that are built into paths so that we know where he is, where he was, where he's going, how far along the path that he is at. Uh, we have access to all of those because now he is on a path. So you can say if he is halfway to the path, pause, activate a cutscene. If he is three quarters of the path, have him fire out a fireball. You now have all of this built in functionality like we talked about last time, you have all of these built-in variables that you can now use to then change dynamically the path that your AI is running on. So that's what I would recommend using. It's, it's a couple more lines of code. You can see here you have to create a path and then tell it to start as opposed to MP potential step is just literally one line of code. But the path gives you more flexibility and more knowledge about how your AI is actually functioning as they are moving along that path. But those are the advanced path functions that GameMaker offers. They are useful and they're great for getting your AI set up. And for some instances, that's all that you need. If you don't need super smart AI, then don't add it. Uh, complicated AI is not good AI by itself. So if you can get away with simple, then I would recommend you do that and use these functions to the best of your ability to make the best games you can. But that's all that I've got for you. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I hope that you've learned something. And as always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you later. If you'd like to support me more than just liking and subscribing to my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon like all of the awesome people on the screen right now. They get to vote on upcoming tutorials and get one-on-one -on -one training sessions with me each month. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you later. <laughs>